Oh my god, my eyes. I mean her eye. This obviously is not working for me. This artwork really makes me feel like I don't deserve to be called an artist. Oh my god, this is so difficult and everything is like going wrong. Like a piece of crap. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes and today I'll be doing something different because I found this portrait that I want to paint but then I was thinking that maybe I should do 8 different painting styles this time inspired by these artists that I found on Pinterest, Instagram or the internet. So I thought that it would be fun to see, give myself a challenge and see if I can imitate their style and learn something from them. So without any further ado, I'm going to start by reacting to myself self-painting in Procreate and I'll see you right after the jump. Okay, let's start and play the video. So right now I'm just preparing the whole thing for the eight portraits so I'm just going to sketch everything out and because this sketch has to be very very accurate since I'll be recycling this sketch for eight portraits I need to be very very accurate with this. And here I'm shading it to make sure that everything is proportionate and then after that I'm actually going to line the whole thing and have a clean line work so that I can keep and reuse for every single portrait. And here the red lines, I'm actually keeping them so that I know where to like shade them. And then now I'm just separating everything into blocks of colour so that I can quickly drop in colours if I want to separately colour each part of them. And the last step of the preparation, I'm actually going to do the value painting first so that I can recycle this value painting and use them for every single portrait later on. But this value painting is actually doesn't have any pure black or white so that in case I still need to bump it up later on, I can still do that. I can still have the flexibility to do that later on. And now let's work on the first portrait. And this is the first portrait. It's actually a black and white portrait, um, pencil drawing kind of portrait. And it's by Enrique Bernal. So this is a kind of painting that is very, very rough and very detailed at the same time because it's mostly done using pencil. So I'm using mostly the charcoal blender, the shading graphite and the 6B graphite. And now, because this painting is going to be a lot more higher in contrast, I'm going to add a lot more contrast and blacks into them. And once I'm done with the portrait itself, I'm actually going to block in the shape of the light source. So once I have the shape blocked in, I'm actually going to quickly colour another duplicate of this painting so that I have a coloured version first. And then using the colour block as a mask, I'm going to mask the colour version because there is a theory that says that where there is light, there is colour, so there is colour in these areas. And the last thing to do is to paint the glow. So the glow will go from red to orange to yellow and to finally to white. So basically this is the most basic color of fire and usually this is the sing single most definitive uh, color scheme that defines light which is red, orange, yellow and white. So once I'm done, I will darken the value painting for contrast and then after that, I will sharpen and add some noise to the painting and call this painting The second portrait style that I will be doing is by Raise.I. It's a marker style illustration in digital format and I'm going to do this on Procreate. So using the color blocks that I have, I quickly block in the skin tones and I made a new brush set to work on this painting. It's actually a marker brush set but I made it so quickly so I don't think I'll be sharing this brush set so soon. And then I used the Copic Skin Tone Palette. I took it from the net and I made a palette out of it in Procreate and I used this. And halfway through, I realized that I was wasting like a lot of time. So I deleted everything and I just used the value painting and modified that to fit this painting style itself. So basically right now, I'm putting in all the shadows with a soft multiply brush. It's using the multiply blending mode which will create a very burn effect kind of shadows. I'm using a lot of hard unblended edges because marker usually have this kind of effect. And I'm constantly thinking about how to design the brush strokes because the edges are hard, it's going to show it has to look good. And I'm just trying to visualize everything in terms of beautiful patches of colors that connect together. The hair itself is made out of sharp clean lines like pen strokes. And then after that, I just got distracted and started painting some highlights. Back to the hair, I'm using a coarse brush texture which resembles pastel to shade the hair for a bit. And then after that, I'm going to layer on top more pen strokes for the marker style. 
And lastly, I'm going to finish up the painting with lashes. So the outlines are all very, very sharp. They're all just using the basic pen in the inking brush section. The eyes itself has a lot of blunt strokes with sharp outlines. This is my first time doing this style and I'm really liking it already. And the highlights are very chunky and wet, which I really, really love. And I feel like adding a blusher, so why not? And so I added a blusher stripe across her face. And then after some finishing touches, I sharpen the whole painting and we are done. For the third portrait, I actually do not know who the artist is. So if you guys know who is this artist, please leave a comment down below. So this is actually a style where it's very Instagrammy and it's very illustrative and very tan and very brown. So straight away, I just modify from the value painting and create a very tan and brown color base first. And then now I'm trying to create like a cross hatching brush and I'm just testing it out and see if it works. Then after that, it's time to do the base. So I was just trying to see if I can overlay some of the cross hatching and do the sharp line work for the entire face and see how it goes. After putting in the line work, it already looks very amazing. And now I'm just trying to block in the strands of the hair with lines first. And then once I have blocked in all the lines, I'm just going to fill them in with different values and different neutral tones. Then I will rinse and repeat the entire process and put block in even more lines and then drop in even more values and colors. I have about like four or five layers of hair right now. And then after the hair is done, I'm gonna use the same marker brush to shade the face. This is the same brush that I use from the other portrait and it's on a multiply mode. And of course they have an hard edge. So I'm testing the highlights right now. So highlights is basically glow with some cross hatching on top. And since the highlights work, I'm gonna move on and do the rest of the shading. So once the rest of the shading is done, I will actually add the details in later. So now I'm adding in the cross hatching on top of the shadow artwork. And then now I'm aging the entire face with a sharp highlight. And it's nearing the end right now, so I'm putting in the rest of the highlights and it's using the same process that I tested just now on her forehead. For the eyes, I'm using a beautiful turquoise colour and they are going to be very sharp. The colours are very punchy in this illustration. Oh my god, my eyes! I mean her eye, this is so bright! Oh my god, okay, let's dim the highlight down a little bit and see if that works better, okay. So I'm just going to splatter some freckles on her cheeks and sharpen the painting and we will call this done. So for the next painting, this is very very neutral. This is by an artist called Evian Tan. It's, this painting is inspired by her and this painting is full of greys. And I'm starting with a very pale yellowish green for the base. So everything is just very very great and I wanted to do this to show you guys how far we can push the limits of colours when we are doing portrait. But the key in this type of neutral illustration is using reds in the shadows. So using muted tones in portraits is a good way to challenge yourself because this is a great way to depict light when it comes to portraits. And now that I got the colour right already, I'm going to blend the whole face first to get my base right. And if you notice here, there's actually just two distinct shapes for the shadow design. Now the next step to do is to start with the palette. So I have the yellowish green white thing for the white and I have a purple dark purple thing for black and I have red on the other end. So using these three tones, I'm going to mix the palette and then after that, everything in between will be the skin tone. So I'm just going to pick the colours from in between these palettes to use for the skin tone colours. And as long as we warm up the shadows and the lips and the cheeks, and now I'm taking the usual detour to paint the hair first halfway because I've al I always like to do this. So the hair has a lot of hard unblended like chunky flat strokes. So I'm just trying to block them in right now and see what I can do later on. So I feel that most of the portraits that I've been doing really have very very different styles of rendering hair and shadows. Some of the shadows are soft, some of the shadows are hard and chunky. So I guess that really defines what makes a style. And this colour palette itself is designed to make one strong colour pop-up which is the red. So because of that, I'm adding a ribbon to the hair. 
And now I'm trying to figure out the clothes, but for the love of my life, I couldn't figure it out at all and it looks like a clam right now. So I have to like redo this whole thing and erase it and try and figure this out before I proceed. The shadows is mainly made of purples, reds or dark purples and they are like the bridge between the skin tone and the red and the purple so it's all in between colours and finally after the hair is done I finally got the courage to work on the face again after a long winding road of working on everything else The highlights are quite understated, they are just blended strokes so no glitter or no sharp highlights or flares or anything like that the eyes itself has a very very simple muted design which is the beauty itself lies in the simplicity of the tones. And now we are done. And now the next one is a very very popular style done by Blue Satin. So this is a style that is very very popular and everyone loves it. And we will start with a blue or grey base over a value painting which is the value painting that I've prepped earlier on. So I use a lot of different colours on the value painting. Yes, meow. And as long as the value is correct, the painting would work. So you need to really push this to the boundaries. And now I'm testing out the highlights color first and see if it works. Once the base color is done, I'm gonna smooth everything out. So because I've already like patched in all the colors right now and I want to smooth it out before I proceed. This Kind of portraits are very very smooth and when you're dodging and adding highlights, I'm actually using blue right now to dodge and the usual hair detour starts right now. So I'm just going to detour for the hair. The hair is actually quite realistic in terms of rendering but the colours itself is kind of impressionist. So we have a lot of colours going on here. And you can notice that I bounce some of the background pink back onto the hair and some of the blues from the highlights back onto the hair. So the trick to making um, really luminous portraits is to bounce colours all the time. So now I'm putting in the details and if you notice here, the shadows are also a lot more saturated and a lot more red. The eyes itself is soft and it's blurry and we also have a lot of freckles and skin imperfections and textures that pop out in certain areas. So now I'm just going to lay down the brows and the lashes and they are pretty much quite natural. Then after that, we will apply an insane amount of highlights and glows to the entire face. So glitter everywhere and glows everywhere. But And then after that, I'll finally drop in an extra soft shadow shading to make the whole painting pop, add a noise and sharpen filter and then we are done. For the next portrait, I'm actually doing a romantic portrait and this is inspired by one of the local artists that is from my own country, Bear Brigia. And so this painting starts off with a lot of earthy tones with a lot of reds for shadows and the whole thing is just very brown and muted and romantic. The eyes is another shade of brown which is a bit closer to yellow so it turns out looking a lot more like hazelnut. And once the eye is done, you can see that there are actually reds reflected on them. So as usual, you always have to reflect some sort of colour back to each other so that you can create the idea of luminosity. And now we will do the usual hair detour and block in the hair colour first. Then after that, I'm just going to slim down the eyebrows for a softer look, a more feminine and a lighter look as well. And then we have to remove all the harsh shadows, so all the harsh shadows next to the nose and below the nose have to be gone. The blending is actually quite soft, so we are going to smooth everything out except for some edges here and there. The lips are very very rosy, think really romantic like juicy lips. And dodging before the highlights would include yellow and pinks instead of using blue because that would be too harsh. So there's actually a lot of magenta and pinks going on in the entire painting to create the luminosity effect. And the standout highlights are going to have a very very sharp edge and also a darker outline around it. So the lashes are very soft, subtle but it's also shaded at the same time. And once it's done, I'm going to put a splash of highlights on her face with some lens flare and glitter. And now we'll move forward to her hair. So her hair is going to be soft shaded waves and there are going to be a lot of curls and very romantic soft strands of hair everywhere. 
and the highlights is going to be laid on later on with pastel brush to give that texture then we're going to end it with a romantic sparkle splash on the hair and because it's so romantic i decided to add like a touch of flowers and see where that leads me and i really like where this was going so i think this is good enough and this is really good so i'm gonna call this done the next one is a concept art style which is inspired by Ross Draws. Now everybody knows Ross Draws right and I'm so excited to try out this style. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to liquefy everything to make the face slimmer so that they look a bit more like, I don't know, what, what's the term, comic-y or just more streamlined if you will. And I'm going to simplify the value into two shapes so that it's a lot more simple because their lighting structure is actually quite distinct and simplified and then I started with this eye then I realized oh my god this is so difficult and everything is like going wrong so I didn't know what to do and everything just looks like a piece of crap so and honestly this is seriously so difficult and I almost gave up so maybe I tried to lighten it and it still like didn't work out but it worked out when he did it I don't know why this is not working out so I gave up and then I started over, so I repainted the entire value painting again with soft brush and I just make sure that there are really just two distinct shapes of the shadows. And because you see here, the highlights are all made out of like special effects brushes, right? And I don't have those brushes, so I can only just sketch them on. And now it still looks kind of weird, so I thought that maybe I should just like put patches of bold colour everywhere, it worked for him but obviously it's not working for me so I thought, okay, I'm just gonna work on the eyes first and get like, you know, one thing looking correct and see what happens then so once the eye is done, I still feel like something is not right but I started like putting in the highlights and the colour patches using special effects brushes and try to like just make it work, you know so basically most of the colour patches you see are on saturation mode with special effects brushes and some of the highlights as well and they are just so well blended that it has hard edge and soft edge at the same time but it's neither in between <laughs> how do I explain this? and the clothes was another disaster I, just, I was just struggling with the whole design and composition of it oh I mean there's like design and composition within the strokes like how can this be right? this artwork really makes me feel like I don't deserve to be called an artist but at least I got this glow shot right it's the only thing that works here and I don't know I just want to finish this and call this done and never look at it again so now I'm trying to finish the hair you may not feel my pain when I'm painting this just now but now that you see me do this line line of light thing around her forehead you can definitely feel my pain I, it looks like it looks terrible <sighs> Okay, let's just move on, okay? Can we just go back to like something that I'm good at? So the last portrait that I'm doing is actually by this artist um, called Rob's Arts. And it's an abstract watercolor style. So it has very bold colors. It's abstract because the colors don't really make sense. The values are barely there. And we are really pushing like the envelope of colors within portrait itself. And have you ever seen a Chinese ghost before. So now I'm just painting in patches to fill in the entire face before I add in the details because everything has to be patchy and looks like watercolor and I don't have watercolor brushes that I had custom made myself. So I kind of have to wing it here and now I'm just trying to clean up everything. I really feel like I can do better at this if I have my own watercolor brush set which I'm gonna make like later on right after this. And I feel that with any kind of painting, especially these kind that are so abstract, you need something very solid to pull everything together. So the most solid thing here that can pull everything together is the blacks, which is the line work and the details and how you add the blacks in to really balance the artwork itself. And after that, I'm going to add in some splatter to make it look a lot more organic and like, I don't know, watercolory and some splatter at the back and then now we are done so we actually have completed like all eight styles of painting wow. 
you can see them right here. They are actually pretty challenging. I'm, I took really, really long to finish all of them. Am I proud of finishing all of them? I think so. I've learned a lot. I've learned that if you want to make a style your own, figure out your hair first because if you realize all the hair are different and figure out how you're going to do your shadows. Are they going to be sharp? Are they going to be soft? Because these are like the two most distinct differences that I encounter with all the portraits despite their unusual differences in like how they deal with light and values, etc, etc, right? So now I would like to suggest that you take it up as a challenge to do a 8 style painting portrait that you pick a picture of a portrait or a girl and then after that you just try and attempt to paint 8 styles out of that portrait and see what happens after that. I can guarantee you, you will be able to discover your style definitely and see which ones you like most likely. So did you like my process and which one is your favourite? I really really want to know and let me know which one is your favourite down in the comment section below. I'm gonna leave right now but before I leave, remember to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!